When David Tennant was three years old, he told his parents that he wants to become an actor because of watching Doctor Who. He later went on to play the 10th Doctor. Peter Capaldi, who played the 13th Doctor, was a lifelong Doctor Who fan, and so landing the role was an absolute dream job for him, and he made sure everybody knew about that. And then Jodie Whittaker, the latest incarnation of the Doctor, thinks that all white men are evil, <laughs> and that Doctor Who just celebrated the male gaze. Remember when it was a fun sci-fi show and not a political piece of crap? No. Me neither. Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Now, yes, today's video is something different. Normally I deal with video games. This is still remaining in the land of geekdom, but I'm a bit of a Doctor Who fan. And so with this news, I thought I would give it a shot on the channel. And if you like, please let me know in the comment section down below and give this video a like. If you don't like, don't kill me. <laughs> Just give me some feedback down below and trust me, I will take it into consideration. Legit, not like Blizzard consideration. I mean, I'll, anyway, never mind. Um, anyway, so some news has come out that um, Jodie Whittaker's tenure as the Doctor and also Chris Chibnall's I think maybe a little bit more importantly, uh, tenure as showrunner of Doctor Who might be over a lot sooner than expected. In actual fact, at the end of the next season, not this season, at the end of the next season, which has already uh, been rumoured to be much shorter than this season of Doctor Who. Now, I just want to lay a couple of things down here. I was actually a fan of the fact that the Doctor changed gender. Is it because of my diversity? No. I was actually a supporter of the change because I personally believed Doctor Who had got very stale. Uh, I think that Moffat's writing, like most people, really lost its way. And uh, I don't want to rag too much on, on Stephen Moffat because... I think he has written the best. Not some of the best, not maybe the best. I think he has written, without question, the best Doctor Who episodes in the new era of Doctor Who. Uh, the Girl in the Fireplace, uh, Blink, uh, The Doctor Who Dances. These, to me, are just unbelievable episodes. Absolutely unbelievable episodes which stand head and shoulders above the rest. And I could always tell when it was a Moffat episode. He just had a certain uh, style to it. It had a certain tension to it, a certain writing to it. And so when he took over as showrunner, I was actually very happy at first. And I thought Matt Smith's first uh, season as the Doctor was very good indeed. And I thought it was a pretty decent storyline, even though I wasn't a fan of Amy, Amelia. Yeah, whatever. And um, things look good, and then it just really kind of descended into nonsensical, I don't know. And it, I, I just lost my way with it. Uh, as regards to the casting of the Doctor, I think the casting of the Doctor has always been exceedingly good. I thought that uh, Christopher Eccleston was a great choice, quite a surprising choice, because he's quite a prominent actor here in the UK, even at the time. So to take that role was... Uh, uh, in 2005, uh, was a little bit of a surprise, but he, um, you know, he obviously had the chops to carry it off, and he did. He played a very down the line doctor uh, with a little bit of goof here and there. And then when David Ten Inch, yeah, I said that correctly, ladies, uh, when David Ten Inch took over, uh, he really imprinted his own style of the doctor onto the franchise. Uh, he was a lot, lot more flirty, he was a lot more fun-orientated, and I thought he made a tremendous Doctor. Remember when Matt Smith took over, and I think Matt Smith took over at the tender age of 26, I think the youngest Doctor Who they'd ever been, I was nervous at first, because I thought, oh my god, they're just 
casting pretty boys as as Doctor Who. And then when I saw him in action, particularly in the very first episode he was in, uh, he, he won me over completely. I, I suddenly realised that this young... Inside this young body was a very old man. And he played that so, so well. Uh, and I really enjoyed Matt Smith's tenure. I thought he had some awful writing towards the end, unfortunately, of his of his tenure. Uh, but he himself was a, was a phenomenal Doctor. And then Peter Capaldi, going back to an older Doctor, and I think Capaldi is a sensational actor. Uh, I've seen him in a lot of things over the years, from Malcolm Tucker uh, <laughs> and his ridiculous potty mouth, uh, to actually his work in Torchwood, uh, was it Children of Earth? In Torchwood, where he played a very dark role as a, a as a government representative, and yeah, uh, but Capaldi has been a lifelong Doctor Who fan. Uh, David Tennant uh, wrote a letter to Blue Peter, I think, when he was ten, when he was three, he told his parents he wanted to go into acting because of Doctor Who. But it was the writing. So I was I never questioned the Doctor. I questioned the writing. And there was no doubt to me that Moffat's writing had, had fallen off a cliff and he was just writing nonsense now. So when it was announced that Jodie Whittaker would be taking over the role, I was actually very happy indeed because I thought it would inject a much-needed change to the Doctor Who franchise. I thought it would inject and uh, allow the new showrunner, Chris Chibnall, to create different stories uh, from a different perspective, to just shake the status quo up. Uh, I believe Moffat was the person who uh, inserted into the Gallifreyan law that Time Lords could alter gender. Until then, I don't believe it actually been a thing. And I was okay with that. I actually had no problem with that at all. And I knew, that obviously, that this would lead... Uh, to opening the door to uh, to a female doctor and seeing how that would actually turn out. Unfortunately, it wasn't Joanna Lumley. Deep cut for some people there. And, uh, I, yeah, I thought this would be a, a good opportunity for Doctor Who to just take a, a different path. And my only concern was actually the showrunner. And I said, if, if this season, if this new season with Jodie Whittaker fails... Because I know the acting chops of Jodie Whittaker from, from shows like Broadchurch. And she's very, very good indeed. I did think that it would be Chris Chibnall, who although is great on Broadchurch himself as the writer, when it's come to his episodes of Doctor Who, they haven't been great. I quite enjoyed one of them with the dinosaurs on the spaceship. It was really goofy, but I kind of liked it. But other than that, he hadn't done anything. So I, I was more concerned about the showrunner and the writing. Then more news came out about the new series. And then Jodie Whittaker herself made, in my opinion, a couple of really bad errors. And there seems to be this... this we're in a situation in today's day and age, and I'm sorry to get political. I'm sorry. But I think it has to be said. We're in a situation in today's day and age where the far left just believe themselves to be the the word. They don't listen to anyone. They think everything they say is correct and set in stone. If you disagree, you are branded with the most horrendous words imaginable. Misogynist, white supremacist. Um, sexist, you know, all these kind of all these kind of words. If you don't agree, so even people with legitimate concerns, even people with legitimate arguments, get dismissed because of diversity in the far left. And Jodie Whittaker, before the new season of Doctor Who came out, in my eyes, opened a big mouth and said some of the most stupid things imaginable to the the Doctor Who fandom. Uh, the first one, she did a, an interview, I think, with the Radio Times. And uh, she said, which is a, like TV guy. If you're from America, it's essentially TV guy for the BBC. And that's the British Broadcasting Corporation, not Big Black. cock a doodle do. And in that, she said that uh, something along the lines of paraphrasing here, but she said, white men 
aren't the only heroes. And as soon as you read that, you were just like, oh, no. Here we go. Here we go. We're, we're not going to be dealing with great sci-fi stories, with interesting aliens from a new perspective. We're just going to be dealing with far-left ideology. Great. Can't in wait. And then she did a, an interview with Vulture, where to me she said some of the most stupid things I've, I've heard. And I quote, this is a legitimate quote now. Very often, we're only seeing stories from the white male gaze. That's what Doctor Who always celebrated. What? No, no examples, no supporting of this ridiculous uh, phrase, this ridiculous sentence... Just unbelievable nonsense. Uh, but I was willing to give the series a try. I still wanted to give it a try. I wanted to see what it would be like. And I watched the first episode. And I just thought the series was insanely boring. Ridiculously dull. I... Lost was lost with Jodie Whittaker's portrayal of the Doctor. I, I, I didn't see what on earth she was trying to do other than do a very bad imitation of David Tennant with a mixture of Matt Smith in there as well. I didn't see her implanting her own style of the Doctor. Now, you could argue, yeah, but, you know, it's her first episode, she's got to get used to the role. I hear, I hear that. I absolutely hear that. But when you looked at... Christopher Freckleston, he had a very clear uh, picture of what his doctor was going to be and the way that he portrayed his doctor. Very serious with moments of levity. And then as soon as it switched over to David Tennant, he completely inserted himself immediately onto the role. Uh, there were a little bit of darkness, but mostly levity. So he was almost the flip reverse of what Christopher Eccleston's Doctor was. But he came across as a very young Doctor. Matt Smith, young in years, played quite an old Doctor. <laughs> he played a, an old man in a young body. And he was a bit, you know, skittish and blah, 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 And all over the place. And again, for such a young age, 26 years old, and just implanting that from the very first episode he was in. And then Capaldi turned out to be a very standoffish doctor. It got rid of all that flirtiness with the companion. Again, pretty much straight down the line. Uh, very thought-provoking doctor. I thought he played it excellently. But Jodie Whittaker's first episode, I was just like, is she Matt Smith? Is she... Uh, trying to do David Tennant, it, it, it was just it felt so cosplay. It didn't it didn't feel like uh, she was trying to implant her own personality onto the the role, and that coupled together with the fact that the episode, as I said, was just to me dollars dishwater. I was so bored for the vast majority of it. It didn't leave a particularly good first impression. However, it did very well in the ratings, and we're going to have a look at some of the ratings. In a moment, it did very well in the ratings. Uh, new Doctor, new gender. There was a lot there to be interested in, just for anybody. And it did did very well indeed. So I thought I'd give the next episode a go. Hopefully, Jodie was going to become more relaxed in the role and implant a bit more of herself in this episode. And I wanted to see something there. And I thought the the only good thing about the first episode was... The TARDIS missing. And I thought, this is actually an interesting potential piece of storyline here. Maybe we're going to see a Doctor without the TARDIS. And somehow they're going to be able to, to bounce around here and there, even if they technically become intergalactic hitchhikers, her and the crew. Uh, but, you know, it would ultimately lead maybe to the end of the series and discovering the TARDIS again. 
But in this very second episode, they just got rid of all that. <laughs> It was called the Ghost Monument, and she immediately found the... Well, when I say immediately, it was at the end of the episode, she got her TARDIS back. And it was just like, oh. <laughs> okay, so the, the potentially hook, the potential real clever hook for the series is, is now all gone. Back in the TARDIS, uh, jobs are good. And to me, this kind of didn't make a lot of sense, because she just got these companions together... And I thought the most interesting character in the first episode, spoilers, uh, was killed. And that was the grandma, uh, Bradley Cooper's wife. And I thought, if she's just got a TARDIS back immediately, why didn't she go back in time and just stop her from getting killed? And then they should, they should just let all the companions off <laughs> there and then. That would have made a lot more sense. But the second episode in itself, again, was dull, boring, and, and I lost Jodie completely. I lost her completely, and the rest... Of, she just felt like a regular person. She didn't come across as the Doctor. She didn't come across as somebody who was running the show. She didn't come across as the personality. She just came across as one of them. Just When I say one of them, I mean one of whoever was in the, the episode. And uh, and then when I saw the what was coming up for the next episode, and it was the Rosa Parks, and I was like, no, I'm done, I'm done, I'm out, I'm out, because I could see what was happening here. I could just see it a mile off, and uh, I have no interest in in Chris Chibnall's White Guilt. I've got no interest in it whatsoever. Chris, you, you, if you're riddled with white guilt, good for you. Piss off somewhere else. Uh, and because uh, Rose Park is, is, is such an important historical figure, to have this pathetic leftist attitude uh, of, of trying to, to then get the Doctor involved in this mix, no, get out of here. Absolutely get out of here. Nonsense. Uh, just, just ridiculous uh, ideology. Get no, 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 done, done and done. So that coupled with what Jody had said, I was just like, no, I know what's going on here now. I know what's going on here now. It's just, it's just going to be the demonization of of white people. It's just going to be uh, far leftist, and they don't understand that it's them themselves that are the racists. They just don't get it. They just don't understand. Hey, people of color. People of ethnicities, we're here as white people to protect you because we look so down upon you that you're not able to defend yourselves or look after yourselves. We are the left and we are here to defend you. And it's just the most pathetic racism out there. And they just don't get it. They think they're the heroes and they're the absolute villains. But um, let's have a look now at some of the ratings of uh the new season of doctor who so uh the woman who fell to earth very well indeed uh and this are the these are the uk uh views so 10.96 million now that is the show on the night and also people who watch it on iplayer as well coupled together but then we start to see a distinct drop in these so the first episode, the second episode drops off by 2 million. Understandable. You know, uh, the first episode is always going to be a curiosity for a lot of people. Not necessarily people who are going to stick around. Not, necess uh, not necessarily Whovians who are going to be there for the long haul. Rosa goes down, goes down again, goes down again, down again. And the latest episode, we're nearly, nearly 50% after seven episodes down on the opening one so there has been a, a colossal tumble a huge drop off uh in viewing so is that the reason why well apparently chris chibnall is uh is unhappy as the showrunner and jody whittaker says that if chris chibnall isn't the showrunner then she doesn't have any interest in continuing as the doctor so if one goes the other goes and i've got no problem with this whatsoever uh, I, I think this will be a good idea because this season has been littered with, with just political ideology. 
and uh, oh, demons of the Punjab. Are they are they white people? Is, is that who the demons are? Is it the white man by any chance, Chris? Yeah, this this whole season has apparently arachnids in the UK was anti-Trump, anti-capitalism. Uh, and to me, this isn't Doctor Who isn't the show. Doctor Who has always been a show that has been inclusive and diverse by its very nature. And it just tells cool little sci-fi stories intermingled with that. It doesn't have to get political. It doesn't have to do that. Uh, Doctor Who is at its best with its relationships, particularly between the Doctor and the companions. And that's when Doctor Who really shines. We, we've seen some very interesting dynamics with the Doctor. We saw how um, Rose and Christopher Eccleston's Doctor started to bond. And then when Christopher Eccleston changed into David Tenninch, uh, we suddenly saw her not being able to, to cope with a physical change. But then he turned into a much younger, more handsome person and a, a kind of romance blossomed between the two. Um, and then she got trapped in the alternative dimension. And then we had uh, the next companion come in. Oh, I'm so sorry. It uh, eludes me right now. Uh, Martha. Ooh. Martha comes in. And Martha is, again, she's very attracted to David Tenninch. And... He's not interested. And, and then we get a dynamic of somebody who is interested and is literally following him around the universe just to be with him. And somebody who is not ever going to reciprocate that. And, and then we have David with Donna and just the, the friend dynamic between the two. No, nothing sexual, no, no of that variety whatsoever. And I think that was the most successful uh series i think in the in the new in the new age and doctor who's companions have always been very strong women this hasn't been a show in my opinion my white gaze opinion uh that is just about the the white male gaze this has been a this is a show pri primarily where we see the doctor through the eyes of the companion the companion is almost us the companion is is, is almost the main character of the show and the Doctor is secondary in a, in a lot of it because the companion is the human. The companion is the person we can relate to, whereas the Doctor is an, an alien. And although we can understand and empathize with the Doctor, they are alien and they will, they will never be, never be uh, human. And uh, yeah, so we see some very interesting dynamics between the companion and the Doctor, and in the first two episodes of this, I, I saw no chemistry. No chemistry at all. It, it To me, it was just box ticking. Box ticking uh, companions because of my diversity. And I didn't see much personality with uh, the characters. I know some people have actually uh, given Bradley Walsh's character a bit of praise, but... I didn't even see anything there. He was just kind of like there and would say a line here or, here or there. And I, and I know it was only two episodes I watched, but there was nothing for me. I, I was just like, nah, nah, nothing for me at all. So a, a huge steep drop off. Chris Chibnall saying he's unhappy. Jodie Whittaker saying if, he, if he's not sticking around, I'm not sticking around. And the rumor is that after the next season, which is going to be about six episodes or so, uh, they'll leave. And the series will be rebooted again. New showrunner, new Doctor. So has the female uh, Doctor been a disaster? I, I, I'd i say we don't know. And I, I say we don't know because we haven't seen that yet. Because all we saw is a, a female Doctor and uh, political ideology getting thrown in. So I don't think we've ever... We, we have seen yet... Uh, what it would be like to have a female Doctor just doing a sci-fi show and, and some interesting sci-fi stories based around that because Chris Chibnall's just too busy trying to throw in his political agenda and Jodie Whittaker is too busy doing interviews, demonising white men for some bizarre bloody reason because it seems to be the trendy thing to do in, in uh, entertainment right now. Um, so in that regard, I don't know. But uh, maybe 
although I wouldn't put my, my, my house on this because the BBC has gone very, very far left in, in recent years. But maybe if the rumour is true and they do leave, uh, they might see this as an opportunity to, to reset the franchise. To reset Doctor Who and and go with what they know and just create good sci-fi instead of trying to thrust political nonsense into a show which is ultimately meant to be fun for the audience. Not morals, not lecturing, uh, not being preached at. There's nothing wrong with putting in, uh, putting messages into a show at all if they're done subtly and done correctly. But this is literally just shouting in your face and wagging a finger and trying to demonise uh, a lot of people. And all that's going to do is alienate them. Boom. Alienate them. That's the line that you end the show on because Doctor Who is an alien. Right. Uh, so, uh, good riddance. I couldn't care. Go. Please, go. The pair of you, go. Uh, Chibnall, you, you garbage. And Jody, you nonsense, woman. Nonsense. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Links, they're in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.